Welcome to Manitic Stringworks. Remember to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell for more video content. So today on the channel we have something pretty cool, I think. <laughs> we have an unboxing to do. And this is a base I ordered from Toman in Germany. It's a Harley Benton MP4MN enhanced base. So I've seen these online, they're pretty cool seen a few reviews etc and it's got a pickup configuration that I really like um, and the neck is a jazz neck instead of a precision neck lots of features so we'll have a look at it, we'll unbox it check it out and we can't get these in Canada, there are no dealers you have to order them online so I thought I'd see if the process was easy the pricing was good you know and how quick I could get something here and hopefully it's not damaged, right? <laughs> so let's open this box up and see what's inside. All right, so it comes in this big box. So I think there's a box inside the box. A little layer of protection. And the box doesn't look too damaged or anything, but oh, okay, like that. Packing. Another box with the base. So let's put that on the table. Get rid of the big box. And here's the box with the base. Harley Benton. Seems to be in good shape. That's a good sign. Right. Okay. So I just Cut it with a knife here. Now we're going to open up inside. Okay, you know, it's got some foam on the inside, not a ton. <laughs> but hopefully, with the double boxing, there won't be any damage. Oh, there goes the elastic. It's down. There we go. I'll turn it around for the camera a little better. So that's it, the Harley Benton 4MN enhanced base. So it's a precision style body. It has a slimmer, like sort of jazz neck and a few other features. So just quick inspection here. I don't see any shipping damage or anything. So that's a good sign. It looks like the base I ordered. <laughs> so I think the best thing to do is get it on the bench behind me and then we'll have a closer look at it. See what the specs are, see how it's set up, make sure everything's working okay. All right, cool. Okay, so we have the base on the workbench now. So again, this is the Harley Benton MP4MN Enhanced Base. And have a quick look at it. So first inspection, didn't see any damage, any scratches, anything like that. Everything looks to be good, just as ordered. Here's some hang tags, so Toman quality service, inspection, checked by so-and-so, 2020, hmm. or 21, 2220? <laughs> Not sure. And here's a Harley Benton code and hang tag. Take those off. Let's have a look at the heads. So taking a look at the headstock here, it's really nice. You know, similar to a fender shape, a little different here in the cutout. It's got really nice raised lettering here. Harley Benton Pro Series. Metallic silver finish, HB in the corner. String tree. Three strings for a second and third. Gives you a nice, consistent break angle. 
that looks good. We go down the neck, you'll notice right here we have a zero fret. <laughs> That's not something you see too often. Here's our nut. Black binding. We have fret inlays here. Big blocks. The frets feel pretty good. Nothing's snagging. I feel like they're sort of set into the binding a bit. That's probably why. So that's nice. And go down here. We have this wheel for the truss rod adjustment. I really like these, especially where it's placed. Easy to do. Tinker toy, sometimes it's called. We'll come out a little bit. We have a P. H <laughs> precision humbucker configuration. Now the observant amongst you might notice that this is reversed. So normally we have the first humbucker pickup up here and the second one here, but we reversed it. So that's an interesting feature. I didn't catch that at first when I ordered it, only afterwards. So I'm curious to hear if that's any different than a regular P base. Of course, we have a humbucker here at the back, not quite in the music man position. It would sort of be here for the music man position, but that's interesting nonetheless. Roswell, that's their house brand, I believe. And a really nice big beefy bridge here. Lots of adjustments. And we can go through the body like it's strung right now or we can top load it right through here. I like that. I don't think one way or the other is better or worse. Whatever you feel uh, makes you sound better. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you have the option here. So that's good. So we have lots of adjustment on this bridge. So I'm happy with that. That looks really good. Okay. And I see we can lock it as well. That's nice. Controls. So this is a master volume. This is a blend. It's a little indent. We have these two are basically, I think it's bass and treble or treble and bass. Can't remember. But this are also, this is an active passive switch. So it's always an active. If you want it in passive, you pull it up like that. So that's pretty neat. The body is swamp ash with a satin finish. I like that a lot. It looks really good. Black pick guard, maple neck. So let's flip this over and have a look at the back side. Now here's the back and that's that's really pretty. <laughs> you know, it's a couple of pieces laminated, one, two, three, I believe, but it looks really good. Nice big belly cut here. Here's the ferrules for the string through and they're nice and flush. A lot of times these ferrules are installed and they're proud of the body. These are flush, which I like a lot. We have a battery case. Is there a battery in there? Would you look at that? They included a battery. Nice. And we have six bolts, not just four. And there's a bit of a carve right here, a little bit of a comfort sort of carve, not much, a little subtle. Very nice. Here's the back, it's all maple, and it actually looks like one piece. You can follow the grain lines. So this isn't a multi-piece neck or scarf together. And then the tuning machines, you know, they're pretty standard. They're actually, they feel a little thicker than most. So these might be pretty good. Maybe an upgrade to their normal base tuners. And it's made in Indonesia. The color of the neck is a bit yellow. Not sure I'm a huge fan of that. <laughs> I would have liked it a little more natural maple. Or darker maple even. But that's something you can sand and finish yourself, you know. But overall... So far, looking around, I don't see any problems with the build of this base so far. 
We'll dive down and have a closer look though. So another thing to notice here, I mentioned that we have a zero fret, which you don't see very often, certainly at this price point. But these are also stainless frets. So that's another thing. So these are all stainless steel frets. Like I said, they seem to be finished quite well in the ends. And again, that binding, you know, sort of preventing anything from poking out. And the tops, yeah, they probably could be polished a little more. They're a little bit, hear that? A little tiny bit scratchy. But again, for the price point. But I like the big block inlays, and this is a jazz neck. I think this one's about 39 millimeters, so a little bit wider than a jazz neck, which is usually about 38.1. But it has that same nice taper. So I like jazz necks. And again, it's a precision body, but with a jazz neck, which is generally my preference. And that's why I ordered it. <laughs> so again, the pickups, like I said, they're reversed. And the humbucker. And here's the bridge. So I did notice something here. And maybe you can pick it up. The gap from this pickup side here, so the right side of the pickup, to the left side. So the treble to the bass. This is wider than this side, which I suspect that the bridge is not screwed on straight. And if we spin around and have a look. So if you look at the strings, yeah, you can see eh, that they need to be like this. Not too bad up here, but down here with the humbucker this could be over a little bit. And I am noticing that it is definitely not the same spacing from here to here, here to there. Hmm. Now, does that affect the playability? The sound? Probably not. So, might not do anything about it. And if I look up the bass, you know, I don't really notice that the bass side is closer or not. I mean, it probably could go over a touch if I were to measure it all out. I think it's fine. Well, let's plug it in and see if the electronics work. Let's plug this in. I'll turn it on. Oh, it's very quiet. Let's turn the gain off this amp. Terrible amp, by the way. sound. So this is the master volume and put that all the way up. Now we'll do the blend. Okay, so we're off. Here's the middle. Okay, so that seems to be working. And then we have two tones here. I don't want to say treble and bass, but again, through this amp, it's terrible. Now, this is in active mode. curious about the output of these pickups so I've plugged in a jack I'm going to put the ground or neutral to the barrel like the shaft of the output jack and then the tip of the hot on there put that down and then we've got the multimeter set to ohm so I'm going to move the pickup selector here so here's to the uh, P base Right, we're showing 19.71. I've got the volume all the way up. If I turn that down, it goes to zero. So, got the tones set in the middle position. So we're all the way up to 19.6, 19.7. So I'm gonna start rolling this back to the middle position. There's the middle position, so both pickups. And then I'm gonna roll this back right to the 
humbucker here, so it's not showing any change. 19.7. Now that's in active mode. And if I flip up the to passive, huh, 3.1. So we'll go to the neck here. So we're at 8.74. So the P pickups, and then roll this back down to the humbucker. 3.85. That's interesting. Not quite sure what to make of that. Go back to active. Yeah, that jumps right up. But it doesn't change when I roll it between the two. So leave me a, something in the comments below. Tell me what you think about that. What am I actually reading here? <laughs> Okay, next thing is to check the setup. So I'm just going to make sure we're in tune. And I never expect these things to be in tune. Like, really? You're shipping them, you know, 7,000 miles? And you expect it to be in tune? It wasn't too bad out of tune, but it's out of tune. So it's in tune now. Okay, so we're in tune. We're going to see what the setup is like right out of the box. So neck relief would be the first thing, just like any setup, uh, we'll check the neck relief. Capo on the first fret, and want to see at least 12 thousandths, or I should say the most, <laughs> would be 12 thousandths. So we'll push down here at the last fret almost. Yeah, and there's a little too much neck relief there. Just going to try the first string. That could be an action issue too, but yeah, that's, that's higher than I would like. Okay, so we can adjust the truss rod, and we do have that tinker toy <laughs> wheel over here. Now let's well, let's look at the string action. So, you know, fender scale, 34 inch, I like to see 564 at the 17th fret. Um, you can go as high as 6. I've got a gauge here with 5 and 6 64 so let's run that under there. So I'm going to start with the 5, which I like. I can hear it's bouncing, so that means the string is higher. Little bounce. Little bounce. Yeah, not bad, not bad there. I'll flip it over to the 6. And <laughs> now we have no bounce. And it's just touching under there. No bounce, of course. Same here. So that's a little lower even. So that's not bad. So, you know, we're right around 664 for the action, which is very acceptable. And a lot of people play at that height. So, okay, out of the box, that's pretty good. Well, we have a zero fret. <laughs> so, we're going to have a look and see what this is set up at then. So, of course, the nut, when you have a zero fret, is just to guide the strings. It has nothing to do with the height of the string anymore, because the string is resting on that zero fret right there. So I'm going to try... 22 would be the highest, 22 thousandths. And if I go under the first fret, you can hear that scraping, eh? I'll lift the string up. Yeah. Yeah, so it's definitely touching 22. Let's try 20. Yeah, a little easier to get under. So again, this is set up really nicely. You know, it might even be 18 thousandths. Yeah, still just barely kissing it. Yeah, so this is set up really nicely. I mean, that's as low as I would go. 18 to 20 thousandths on a bass is pretty low. Uh, and, you know, if I push down at the third fret, yeah, there's, there's really no bounce on that first fret. So this should be really comfortable to play up in the first position here, and especially because we have a nice, slim jazz neck. So the last thing I would do in a setup, of course, is just check the... Uh, pickup height. Now it's not a big deal right now because not, you know we're just looking at the guitar and initial setup is fine but you know, I look at that and I want to see 
you know, one eighth on the base side, three thirty seconds of an inch on the treble side. And I actually like to measure, so when you have a P combination like this, I like the using the base measurement here and the treble measurement here in the middle. So we'll try on the base side, one eighth. That's pretty good. Maybe a touch high here on the back. Treble side, oh, that's a little high. It's a little high too. So we could lower these a little bit. But you know, it's not horrible. You know, from the factory, it's definitely playable. You know, you would not say, oh, this feels funny. You know, the string height's good. Everything's nice in that sense. So I think you could take this out of the box, tune it up, and play it. And you'd be just fine. Now, I just had a quick look at the frets, and you know, I, I thought they were a little scratchy and <laughs> they can use a polishing. But let's see if we have any uh, any buzzing going on. Again, you can do this in a playing position, you can do it on the bench, not pressing hard down on the guitar. I'm not expecting any issue. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, so there's there's no fret noise, no fret buzzing going on here. And in the open position, everything's good. I will use the fret rocker just for a second here and just check. I can hear a little rocking there. Right? A little bit. So that's interesting. In the second and third frets, we had some rocking going on. As we move up the fingerboard here. Oh, no, that's me. Everything seems to be pretty good. Switch around. Hmm. So we'll come back to the first frets here. So a little bit on the second fret there. A little bit on the third. The fourth. And then we're done on the fifth. So two, three, four seem to be a little bit, you know, they could use a little bit of crowning. But again, it's a new bass. If it's not making any noise when you play, no need to change anything right away. So I would just leave it as is. That would only be a problem if you really drop the action down. But then if you drop the action down to like 464, so you'd have buzzing probably all over the fretboard, even though the frets seem to be pretty level after the fifth uh, fret. So in the shipping box, they did include a little bag here, <laughs> and the bag contains a couple of tools that we need. So let me, I'm just going to take this bag away. <laughs> so this is a tool you don't see every day. And then we've got a couple of Allen keys. So the Allen keys in this case are going to be for the bridge because there are two sizes there. And then this little straight bar, I really like this actually that they included that. That's for adjusting the truss rod wheel. Right? You just put it in and you just move it back and forth. Now of course you can use you know, an Allen key. If you don't have that, that fits in there. You know, you don't want too much slop. You know, you want to, like that's maybe not big enough, but if you had a little bigger one, and let's see, this one too big, yeah. You know, you could find one in your collection of Allen keys that would fit in there, and then you just keep that with you and use that. So, you know, in a pinch, now oh, here's one, that's good. In a pinch, you can just use something else, right? But they give you this, which is nice, so I'm going to keep that in my drawer. <laughs> so 
So I know you're asking, Steve, what do you think of this bass? <laughs> and I actually think a lot of this bass so far. Um, for the price, it's pretty amazing. So this cost $393 Canadian, and I'll put a US conversion on the screen. That's with shipping to Canada. And then there were customs and duty taxes and that for about another $96, I think. So basically we're around 500 and sorry, $490 shipped taxes, everything Canadian. Uh, shipping took less than 10 days from the day I ordered it. So that's pretty amazing. I think, um, Value for money? Absolutely. Does it sound as good as, you know, a bass that's five times the price? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe not. But let's review the features again. So starting at the headstock for $490 shipped to my door, <laughs> I got, you know, this nice headstock with the string trees, you know, improved tuners. Pro Series, we have a zero fret, we have stainless frets, we have black binding down the neck, block inlays, this is a jazz style neck, swamp ash body with satin finish, we have Roswell Precision and the Humbucker pickups, again these are reversed, we have active electronics, Nice beefy high mass bridge right there. And overall finish I think is great. Looks amazing. It's not too heavy. I would guess it's probably about eight, nine pounds. So good weight. Very impressed. Yeah, the four tuning machines. Really nice profile in the neck. You know, satin finish too, which is nice. Although the color not a huge fan of this sort of yellowy tinge to it. it. Does have a little contour. Six bolts. Nice and sturdy. There's your battery compartment. I didn't show you that, but almost like a T-style cup, right? For the input jack. And then these nice recessed string ferrules here in the bottom. And you can see that body is really nice. I like this swamp ash. All right, so would I recommend it? Well, based on the build quality and the price and the features for a sub $500 Canadian <laughs> base, I think it's definitely worth the money and more. Really nice. So I'll see if I can film a little sound demo I don't have the best setup for that, but I know people like that. So cool. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this unboxing and review. <laughs> the Harley Benton MP4MN Enhanced Bass Pro Series. All right. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.